to prevent this kind of behavior that we saw in the last video discussion in the last section of the manual uh, to prevent that behavior it is common in the industry to buffer your IO data going to and from the backplane. So let's buffer the IO in our lab project program. You can do this online or offline, but if you make a minor mistake online, you will have to delete the tag and start over. I suggest that in the manual that you go offline with your project. We'll do that. We'll go offline with our project. So we'll save this as sneak peek before we edit it. Go offline. Typically I have you save the project before you change it and then save it after you change it. So you have two opportunities to save it. The reason that you want to save it before you edit it is you are less likely to accidentally overwrite the previous configuration with the new one. So if you save it and then save it again with a new name you're not going to accidentally overwrite. Uh, just for grins, I'm going to save this right now as L31, beginner L31 buffered IO. You can name it anything you want. Once this gets saved, well then it says the name is invalid. Oh, I see. I have an underscore in there. Save. I had you open up the main program tag database, go to edit tags tab so you can add a new tag and create two new tags. I had to create these two new tags as dense double integers 32-bit words and you might be thinking well there's only six inputs and four outputs so why not have single integers 8 bits. But remember that the memory array in the chipset, in the processor, is 32-bit. You're not really saving any memory by using a single integer instead of a double integer. Plus, if you were decided you wanted to produce or consume any of these tags, that's a very advanced subject, but basically it means that you can set up a tag as being produced from a processor out onto the back plane through a bridge card out onto some network anywhere in the whole world and then somewhere out there you're setting up a processor to consume it. So anytime you produce that tag that processor or processors out there can consume it. Regardless of whether it's a boolean single integer or integer when you go to produce it it's going to be changed to a dent. So it actually runs a little slower producing a boolean than it does producing a dent over the back plane out onto the network. We'll just make them dents. Keep in mind that each of these is a 32-bit double integer. All bits are there in memory and they are all accessible read and write. However, we have res reserved that space in memory for access to just six bits from one of the dents and four bits from the other. So I had you expand these and unfortunately you can't see both simultaneously because they are dense. If we had made them single integers, then we could have been able, we've been able to see them both on the screen at the same time, which is not really that important. Okay, then I had you add two new rungs. I had you add one at the beginning before I leave here. Input slot one, we're going to use zero through five. Then down here for outputs, we're going to use zero through three. However, we will be exercising both dents. So I had you add two rungs. So I'm going to drag a rung down here and drag another one down here. And in the top rung, I had you... Uh, there's several ways you can do this to get over to the right instruction. I could just type in MOV and that would have worked. I'll do that. On that rung, MOV, enter. See, there's a move instruction. It's really a word copy. You're not moving it. If you move something, then it's where it is now and not where it was before. So it's not really a move, but word copy, that acronym was already used, so they use move. So an M MOV, move instruction, is not really a move. It's a word copy. Nonetheless, that's one way to get the instruction in there. So let me delete this. The other way is to uh, scroll over 
through your tabbed instruction set, move logical. You could double click here or you could drag it down and drop it in there. And we're going to do the same thing. We'll go down here, click on the begin the rung and just click. Bang, it's in there. So there's our two move instructions. And I ask you how many Mimi's there were. Well, if we pick this up and drag it around, look at all the Mimi's. They're all saying, drop it here, drop it here, me, me, me. Well, we want it there. Here's the real danger in dragging things around. If you have a very complex code and you grab, let's say, an address and you want it to go here, but you accidentally bring it low, that one's green, but then you bobble a little bit and let go at the wrong time, it's going to go to the not the one that you want. If you're dragging things around, you got to be real careful what you're doing. Then I had you uh, open the source on one of them. Well, we'll do it the way we did it in the manual. Drop down, and we want to move local one eye data. We want that whole word. It's actually single integer. And we're going to move it into the tag that we created. I see, notice the type forward. When I had just IN, it came up with a tag IN00. Add a P, and it jumps right to the one that you want. It input slots one. At the beginning of the program scan, it's going to take and move that IO input data word into this tag that we created. Then consequently down here, our source, because remember now that we're buffering our IO, this is going to be out. Let's see, it came up out zero. Add a P. So type forward and we've got it. And now this we want to go to the output data word. We've introduced a new instruction here, the move instruction. That's what we call it, the MOV, move instruction. Just keep in mind you're not moving anything. I know I mentioned that before. People forget. It's not a move, it's a word copy. But we call it move. Here we go. We've the very first program scan, we take and we copy whatever is in that input memory, that input data memory location. We move it into this tag. Now we're going to use these tags right here, input slot one for our inputs, and these tags, output slot one for our outputs. Rather than going through everything that we did in the manual, I'm just going to take and cheat here. I'm going to grab input slot one. I'm not moving this. I'm taking a copy of it over to here. And of course, that's a double integer. We don't want a double integer. But we're talking about bit zero. Copy that down here. So now we have input slot one bit zero which is the same as local one eye data dot zero and then here we want our outputs and we'll make that so I think you see what we're doing here really straightforward now you have both the inputs and the outputs buffered and isolated from any non-synchronous update of either inputs or outputs. And if you read down through those rungs, you could say that at the beginning of the program scan, in rung zero, the inputs are refreshed, or rather the this tag, its bits are refreshed by that instantaneous state of that word. Then, using that refreshed internal tag, we run our logic, and then once we're done with the logic, we take the results of the logic, we move it into an actual module-defined tag, and out it goes to the output cards. Okay, I just saved this program as in-out buffered. At this point, I'll save it again, and it was in-out. I may have even had you abbreviated. I could have got it buffered. B-U-F RD. I'll just leave it this way. Remember, the name is arbitrary. It's to help you find your different stages of your code if you want to back up and do something over. We'll save this, and now we're going to 
download who active processors picked download thinking 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 slower than molasses in january okay here we are back in the run mode and notice that everything is nice and quiet last man wins this rung says it's on this rung says it's off last man wins so right after this this bit is turned on and turned off this bit is actually turned on at the end of this rung when this rung is scanned it turns that bit on and then within 10 microseconds it reads this rung and turns it right back off. That rung, oh, there, I just saw it flicker. If you have your thinking cap on and you're really pondering this situation, then you can see that this is much more stable. But by the way, we do have the warning. We'll go down here and scroll up. It's the same thing. Duplicate destructive bit reference detected. Main program outputs, blah, blah, blah. These two OTEs. It does occur to me why we do see this flicker on once in a while. It is not flickering at the actual output. So the actual output itself is not flickering on. Let's say we wanted to capture that to see if this actually was turning, even though we see this turning on, do, is that bit turning on, bit zero of the output data. How would you trap that? Well, we're gonna jump ahead here. This is free. This wasn't in the manual. It's something that I find interesting. So I'm going to take this tag, drag it down here, edit the tag to be just bit zero. You can't read a word with that type of instruction. We'll call this gotcha. Okay, that's a new tag name, new gotcha. Boolean, main program, finalize all edits. Now, we'll drag that down and wait till we see this turn highlight to show that that bit see that bit went on it just went on but if i look at the buffer data that's not going on just because you see it go on here doesn't mean that that bit of this word got transferred to this word so remember i told you that the screen hooked to the video display hardware in my laptop through the chipset through the usb port through the usb to 232 converter to the 232 port on that l31 there's no way in the world that that string of electronics could ever keep up with the rate of change in that processor it's just not possible what you're seeing here this is really interesting this is a freebie you see this bit going on in memory because it is going on. Remember, I told you this rung is true, turns that bit on. This rung is false, turns that bit off. So guess what? This graphical user interface, RS Logix 5000, is looking at the data table. It's not looking at the code. This ladder logic you see here, that's a figment of our imagination. It, it, it only exists to present... A relationship of the data with the machine level language that's in there executing the code right now we are actually looking directly at that bit in memory we're not looking at the result of the logic so this is something definitely to keep in mind and this proves that point emphatically that when you see this change state it's changing state in memory but it's not going from the memory out to this word and then out to the output device otherwise remember that this is local 10 data this is local 10 data bit zero if this were to be true it would latch that bit on and it would stay on i don't have an unlatch anywhere very interesting mm -hmm.